Not quick math. Here's a thing you gotta understand about statistics. Increases your chances by 80% does not mean there is now an 80% chance. If your chances were previously 10%, your chances are now 18, not 90. If your chances were roughly 1%, they're now just slightly less than 2%. That's how that works. Wow, I don't understand math at all. Yeah, math and statistics can be very misleading if you don't know what you're looking for, and it also depends on how it's worded and presented. You see a lot of this happening in like news and journalism, and people being like, Th these things have risen by 80%. It's like, okay, cool. What was the percentage beforehand? Two. Okay, cool. You just hit me with clickbait statistics. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Calbus. My name is Zen and today we're taking another delve into r slash Tumblr. One of the prime destinations for people to explore Tumblr without actually going to Tumblr. <laughs> Cause who wants to go to that hellscape? Not I. If you do, you're braver than me. Let's just jump in, shall we? Dating someone with your same name. Would y'all date someone with the same name as you? I'm sorry for adding directly to a post, but I went to a wedding once where the groom's name was Lauren and the bride's name was Lauren. And at the end, the officiant was all introducing Lauren's surname and Lauren's surname, husband and wife, and the entire assembled lost it. Also, sorry for adding, but at my high school, there was a Dominique and Dominique who were dating and everyone just called them Dom and Dommer. <laughs> Which is honestly the funniest stuff ever. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's actually great. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is like one of the worst nicknames to get at school. Holy. <laughs> oh, look, here comes Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> oh, no. Cheeky Nandos. But what does Cheeky Nandos mean? It has to have a meaning. I'm trying to read what this person has said just here, and it is like the most British thing. Like, sp type correctly. It's not hard. It's so not hard to write properly. And it, oh my God. Mate, it's hard to explain, mate. It's just like one day you'll be with your mates and just have it. What? I feel like I'm having a stroke. Mate, it's hard to explain, mate. It's just like one day you'll be with your mates having a look in JD and you might fancy curry club at the spoons, but your lad Callum, who's an absolute ledge, and the Archbishop of Banaberry will be like, perhaps let's have a cheeky Nando's instead. And you'll think, top, let's smash it. What the hell does this say? I'm... I know whoever wrote this, your chavesty, is most likely just making a shit post, but still, the fact that I know people actually speak like this hurts my soul. It hurts. Yucatan. How did they learn to translate languages into other languages? How did they know which words meant what? How did the English person points at apple? Apple. French person, no c'est un pomme. 800 years of war. Fun fact, there are a lot of rivers in the UK named Avon because the Romans arrived and asked the Celts what the rivers were called. The Celts answered, Avon. Avon is just the Celtic word for river. <laughs> Fan fact number two. When Spanish conquistadors landed the Yucatan Peninsula, they asked the natives what their land was called and they responded, Yucatan. In, in 2015, it was discovered in those Mesoamerican languages. Yucatan meant, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Language is an amazing thing. Oh my god. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, uh, language and history are incredibly interesting things to me. It's so good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> when I was eight years old, I asked a question to my brothers, which was just like, do you think do you think French people dream and think in French? And I thought it was the most like mind-boggling thing ever. And I just realized now, yeah, of course they were. <laughs> I, I dream and think in English because <laughs> it's my native language. Why would they not think and dream in their own language? <laughs> Eight-year-old me was so dumb. <laughs> Hee-hee-hoo-ha. I don't think the Joker chemicals really did all that when he fell in. I think he just wants an excuse to be like that. Joker, the Joker chemicals made me crazy. Arkham Doctor, that was a mild detergent. <laughs> I mean, any excuse will do, right? <laughs> the Joker clearly just fell into a giant vat of placebo. 
But again, I guess in that same line of thought, Batman just always wanted to be a bat that fought crime. It was his childhood dream. <laughs> Brother, am I a philosopher? Having an opinion on philosophy makes you a philosopher. Even if you think philosophy is stupid and pointless, that's a philosophy. You can't escape. Socrates was a little bitch. I don't know jack crap neither, but you don't see me bragging about it. Ah oh, hell, Socrates 2.0. Suddenly Scotch Tape's comic makes sense to me. <laughs> now this is an audience participation moment. Is there a name for a philosophy where you try to actively not have a philosophy? therefore being put into an active infinite loop of struggle of philosophy and non-philosophy. There most likely is, and I don't know what I just said. I just spouted a load of crap. <laughs> but I'm wondering if it's a thing. Blowing a dandelion is basically you helping a weed ejaculate. I was having a good day. We were all having a good day. I mean, it's kind of not. Seeds aren't analogous to sperm. Hell, pollen isn't analogous to sperm. Plants don't do dimorphic gametes like that. A better analogy would be firing a couple dozen fully formed babies from a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> now we're having a good day again. And thus we discover the true way to make anybody happy on even the darkest of days. Buckshot babies from a cannon. Those were dark days indeed. Just saw a period typical homophobia tag on a fix set in the early 2000s like, you aren't wrong, but Jeez, that changed fast, huh? The early 2000s were so homophobic, if you wore jeans that fit, they started calling you a metrosexual. Yeah, things changed fast, and I think largely for the better. A lot of things still need a lot of work, but some things got a little bit overcorrected. But still, I think we're heading in a better direction, <laughs> you know? Just say, I hate my dumbass uncle, or whatever. Just talk like a normal person. Can we normalize not loving family members? People need to chill with this, can we normalize thing. All this crap is already normal. There are a variety of normals available to you. Just live your life and feel your feels. Y'all learn the word normalize and ain't shut the hell up since. <laughs> I think it's just become a kind of a meme format at this point. You know, it's just like, can we normalize this? It's like, yeah, okay, cool. We get it. We understand. But at the same time, does do things need to be normal? I mean, do things need to be normalized? You do realize it's okay for things to be outside the norm, right? Just... <laughs> and the normal is always changing. So it's fine. Things don't always need to be normalized, you know? Although most of these posts are just generally looking for validation from other people. That's, that's basically what this all boils down to. You don't need to be validated by other people. Just do you. Just, you, just, just do you. It's simple. All hail the new prophet. Immediately discussing your past with a new therapist is trauma dumping and is actually toxic because you don't know if their therapist is mentally ready to receive such heavy information. <laughs> no, but can you actually imagine arguing this? And I think it'll be on TikTok within the year. August 23rd, 2021 at 10.33am. I too wish I was not the Cassandra of my age. This was such a weird thing to happen. Basically what happened was there was a therapist post about clients trauma dumping. Uh, on TikTok, which is dangerous because one, therapists, it's their job to listen to a client's thing. So they know that they're going to be get, potentially getting into a lot of heavy dealing things. At the same time, you, they shouldn't be going onto a social media platform and mocking people for doing this because to take a step forward to a therapist and opening up to this kind of stuff is a massive and difficult step for people. And then having, having that fear of being publicly shamed for it behind their back that's terrifying and dangerous it was disgusting what this person did and two i forgot i was doing a numbering format whoops <laughs> frick you perry the platypus unironically liking never gonna give you up makes you immortal invulnerable and unstoppable in this essay i will op where's the essay right here i clicked it without thinking about it perish op what does it link to what is, is it straight up is it it's just straight up gonna be a rick roll isn't it <laughs> well played op well played legitimately never gonna give you up by rick ashley is a good song and you cannot tell me otherwise back when i used to be an av tech and i used to run like the music for disco sections from weddings and other large kind of events uh i would always put on rick ashley never gonna give you up and you know what it did 
It filled the dance floor. It's a good song. <laughs> One simple trick to win any magic jewel that wizards don't want you to find out about. Ah, well, you've clickbaited me in. Let's find out. Undefeated in wizard jewels, thanks to my devastating counter magic where I closed the distance and punched them in the chest 14 times while they tried to read a paragraph from a book the size of briefcase. This sorcery crap is easy as hell. No, yeah, if you... <laughs> One of my first ever characters in D&D, I rolled so bad, I had a buff wizard who I would just run up and say, I cast fist and just punch things because I couldn't do magic. <laughs> there was no way about it. So yeah, if you're going up against a wizard or a sorcerer or anything of that kind of stuff, close quarter combat is normally very effective. Unless you're going up against one that's very experienced, then you better be careful. <laughs> then guys know how to throw fists. Pulled a sneaky on ya. A magician asks you to pull a card, any card. In fact, you do. They ask you to put the card back in the pack, anywhere in the pack. In fact, you do. They walk away 10 years later. Your wife gives birth to the six of clubs. Is this your card? The midwife asks in a familiar voice. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the greatest magic trick and long con of the entire world. Oh my god! But then you turn back and you just say, Ah, it was the Nine of Hearts. And then the magician's just like, Ah, oh, well, damn. Puff of smoke gone, out of the door, nowhere to be seen ever again. <laughs> ADHD is so funny. It's like I diagnose you with lazy and inconsiderate mess up disease, and it's incurable. Here's meth. You weigh this meth on the table? Okay. Okay. Now, from my experience, ADHD doesn't automatically turn you into like lazy and consider a mess up disease and all that kind of stuff it's just that your attention gets split between so many things that you want to do at the same time and you just lose track of focus and then you just switch and go oh there and then it just turns into decision paralysis so a lot of the times people just tend to just shut down but then again meth i don't know where i was going with this but I do know where I'm going now because that's all the time we have for today on Calbus. If you like the video, consider dropping a like or maybe even subscribing. Or hey, maybe even sharing with a friend and being like, do you dare venture into the depths that are Tumblr? If you want to see some more r slash Tumblr, and stick around just a couple more seconds because another one will be popping up on your screen. But on that note, I have been your host, Zen, and I hope to see you in the very next video. Have a great rest of your day.